You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. Now, a word from our sponsor, the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute, currently seeking qualified applicants for its innovative Master of Science in Security Informatics degree program. Study alongside world-class interdisciplinary experts and gain unparalleled educational, research, and professional experience in information security and assurance. Interested U.S. citizens should consider the National Science Foundation's CyberCorps Scholarship for Service program, which covers tuition and a $6,000 annual professional development allowance, as well as providing a $37,000 additional annual stipend. Apply for the scholarship and the fall semester by March 1st. Learn more at cs.jhu.edu slash mssi. My name is Jeffrey Wheatman. I am a senior vice president, cyber risk evangelist with Black Kite. Well, I think just like most people my age, I wanted to be an astronaut. I was informed that it would not work because my vision is terrible and I had to wear glasses. Uh, and in retrospect, I'm probably better off not, not being an astronaut. I was always a big science and math guy. And then, of course, when computers came out, uh, I taught myself how to program. Not well, but I taught myself how to program. And I, I think from there, I was really off to the races. I have a, a somewhat unusual pathway. I actually, believe it or not, started off managing a hardware store in New York City. Uh, I was selling uh, plumbing supplies and electrical to a bunch of superintendents in the garment district. And every day I got home and I was more and more unhappy. And I decided one day I like computers. I'm going to go be a computer person. And I put myself through a training class for Novell Netware 3. So I'm dating myself a little bit. And I found out that I was having way more fun doing that than working in a hardware store. So I first started out as uh, a team manager for a company that installed color printers for uh, MCS Canon back in the day. And what I quickly realized was while I was technical, I was much better at communicating about the technology to non-tech people. So I really found mo my sweet spot really is as an ombuds function between technical and business people. I built a bunch of consulting practices for some small companies. Uh, I ran uh, network operations and cybersecurity, although it went back, back then, it was called information security at Martha Stewart in New York City. And um, I, was, I did pen testing for a while and I realized I was not a super good pen tester. So that was sort of my sweet spot was that, that communication ombuds function. I spent 15 years at a large IT advisory firm, and I really, really enjoyed that. But what I found was I was so far from the solution, from the problem, that I didn't feel like I was doing a lot of good. And I saw that organizations were really struggling with third-party risk and vendor risk and supply chain risk. And when I stumbled across Black Kite, I really liked what they were doing. Uh, I reached out to my now boss, who is our CEO, and I said, I think I can help you make this bigger, better, faster, more. And he agreed. And, you know, 20 months in, I think we've had a lot of really good, good success. And I, and I feel like I am able to help people solve their problems at a much sort of granular and closer level than uh, earlier in my career when I was, uh, you know, operating at the 50,000 foot level. One of the interesting things about my job is I do so many different things. So my job is really to think about things and talk about the things that I think about. The one thing I've, I've learned in the last year or so is I'm very good at, it, at being a connector. So I find people that have stuff to do and I find people that can do those things and I make a lot of those introductions. My dad taught me a long time ago. He said, any day where you don't learn something is a wasted day and I try to make every day an opportunity to learn something new, even if it's a small thing.
I think that you can teach technology to people. It's harder to teach them those softer skills. And I think it's something that people constantly have to work on. But at the end of the day, you can be the best at your job. But if people on the other end of that transaction, for lack of a better term, don't understand why what you're doing is important or useful, they don't see the value there. I think being able to put yourself in the shoes of the other person, so empathy for what it is they are going through. I've had conversations with CISOs and I say, so did you talk to your business stakeholder and ask them why they won't do the thing you want? And their response is invariably, well, why would I do that? And I think that is a huge, huge issue, particularly in our career, because it it comes across as as wizardry for uh, a lot of people. They don't really understand. They don't care. They don't understand why they should care. There's a quote that's attributed to a couple different people that I paraphrase. When you speak with someone, they remember how you made them feel much more than the specifics of what you told them. And if you engage with your audience and they find you interesting, they'll invite you back and then you have another opportunity to share something. But if you don't engage them at that level and they find you tedious or or, um, or that you're talking down to them, they won't invite you back and then you potentially lose really good opportunities to communicate valuable pieces of information, value pieces of data, pieces of intelligence, things that will help them make better decisions and be able to understand why certain decisions are more informed. I don't like to say better or worse, but more informed and more defensible. And I just think that, you know, sitting in front of a technical console all the time, while that may be fun, does not demonstrate a tremendous amount of value for the person on the other end of that Uh, relationship. I am definitely a lead from the front person. When I did manage people, I only had two rules. One, don't lie to me. And two, don't put me in a position where my boss asks me a question and the best answer I can come up with is duh. I think openness, transparency, I think it's okay to let people know that you don't have all the answers, that you don't know everything. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. And I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in sharing those mistakes. And I think it's important to open the raincoat, as it were, and let people understand that we're not perfect. We all need help. And then that way they feel comfortable coming to you and asking for help. And the only way really to do that is to live the, it, it, it's to live it, right? Walk, walk the walk and talk the talk. If you find something you love, people will pay you to do it. And I think that loving what you do and really getting down in there and and finding enjoyment, not necessarily in every second or every minute, but you, you do need to end the day feeling that you've accomplished something, that you've done good, that you've shared knowledge. I think uh, the other tidbit I would give, especially for cyber people, I always tell people, don't try to learn it all at once because you're never going to be able to absorb that kind of information. So I think the key is find some stuff, do a deeper dive. If it's something that you really like, maybe you can go deeper still. But I always tell people, you you want to you wanna focus on some different areas across the board, but you're never going to learn everything really, I think is, is, uh, is, is the point there. I would like people to look and say, you know, that Jeffrey Wheatman guy, the world is a better place for him being in it. And I think that's that's really what I try to get to. It's what I try to get my kids to think about. Incrementally, I hope the world is better. I hope people feel like they learn something from our engagement. And I also, I don't, on the flip side, don't ever want anyone to look back and say, you know, that guy was mean to me or that guy was inconsiderate or that guy was unfeeling or uncaring. And I would like the world to be an incrementally better place because I was a part of it.
This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. 